Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. Hoffa day and welcome to KUAM News Weekend Edition. I'm Nick Delgado. We hope you're enjoying your weekend here in paradise. More than a thousand early voters hit the poll in the first week that the Election Return Center opened at the Western Resort in Tumont. We are now inching out our way. 20 days left until the November 8th general election. Early voting continues Tuesday to Friday from 9 to 6 up through November 3rd. If you miss the early voting satellites this Saturday at Ukudu, you can still catch the next Saturday at GCC or on the 29th at Maritza Martyrs Memorial School from 10 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. For more, go to KUAM.com. Just click on the Decision 2022 tab. Well, historically known as the first U.S. territory to legalize same-sex marriage and where couples from Asia Pacific flock to, to make their vows. Guam is no doubt shining as being a place that's accepting and all-inclusive, but has enough been done to show strong support for many here in the LGBTQ community? That question we find the answer to in Kevinsey with KUAM. LGBTQ travelers will appreciate Guam's many different offerings, such as the alluring, crystal clear beaches, luxurious spas, rich culture and history, delectable cuisine, tax-free shopping, and a myriad of adventures. This, according to local tourism officials who promote the territory for its friendly and accepting community. And for those who call the island home like Edward Akbaji Jr., he says he feels the love and support. I think that we've been sort of, um, how do I express this? Like, we have, we have great representation in um, politics right now. We have, like, ever since. Maybe some of them were in the closet. Maybe, I don't know. But um, all that I know is that currently we're noticing a lot of very prominent political figures. Faji, a gay man and recent UOG grad, says he plans to one day be an educator and a writer. He shares the plus side. I think, um, quite frankly, queer politicians and out queer people who are in politics and in doing the work are doing the sort of representation for us rather than our straight counterparts. Along with a specific need in the local community that's still lacking. I do believe that we don't have as much of an adequate kind of support system for our trans youth and trans people. While well, Akfaji like highlights the change he sees in Guam's leaders, Tumuning resident Marcel Palomo says. Um, so I've actually been in the military and I've traveled all around the world. And what I can say is the way the gay community is represented here is almost non-existent. I feel like there are things that we can do as a as a community, as an island, as leaders, I, to help either promote or expand um, what we currently have. Palomo, also a gay man, admits he's not sure what that expansion would look like. He's leaving that up to the people who want to be elected to lead Guam. I do want them to do better. Other issues he feels um, is in need of attention from leaders, the condition of the roads. I'm actually from the south, and the roads down south are still as bad as they were back 20 years ago. Yes, they have made some patches and have done some, some reconstruction, but um, not as much. And I do know that when tourists come here, I do see a lot of them venturing to the south. And... Um, it almost gives a vibe where the South is not, um, it's not as important as Tumon is, or Dedido, or Jigo. He's also tired of hearing how leaders say education is a priority, but he feels they rarely show results. If we're harping and we're focusing on education, I just hope they put more power into pushing education forward because we're not dumb people, and I know that we're on a rock, but I know that there are many brilliant minds out there that have great ideas, um, but I think they just need the tools to help them get there. Well, the Guam Crime Stoppers and Guam Police Department's hoping the community can assist in the capture of the person responsible for shooting in Mong Mong. It's our Crime of the Week. Hoffaday, I'm Sergeant Paul Tupau, your Guam Crime Stoppers Coordinator, and this is your Crime of the Week. 
The Guam Crime Stoppers is seeking the assistance from the community relative to a shooting incident that occurred in Mong Mong. Now, the preliminary report suggests that on Thursday, September 29, 2022, at around 9.23 in the evening, officers from the Guam Police Department responded to the Angel Care building on Robert Street in Mong Mong relative to the shooting incident. Upon the officer's arrival, they discovered a man who had sustained what appeared to be two gunshot wounds to his leg and buttocks area. The man was immediately transported to Guam Memorial Hospital for treatment and care. The officers on scene were able to ascertain information from a possible witness who indicated that a, the male victim was in the parking lot of the former Guahan gym when a gray sedan drove up. The witness further indicated that two shots were heard in which the gray sedan was seen driving towards Manabusan Street in Mong Mong. Should anyone who may have any information as to this shooting incident is kindly asked to submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. All tip information will remain completely confidential and a cash reward of up to $1,000 could be paid if the information provided leads to an arrest and a grand jury indictment. Your call does make a difference. The Joint Region Marianas Fire Emergency Services has beefed up its manpower with the recent addition of nine new firefighters. A graduation ceremony held at the Naval Base Chapel. Jonah Gancharfras has more. In front of family and friends, nine men were pinned and officially announced as firefighters with the Joint Region Marianas Fire and Emergency Services, the first batch to do so since the transition. The huge accomplishment comes after six grueling months of training and academics. Duane Branch is the training chief for JRM Fire and Emergency Services. The recruits first started out with EMT, uh, basic course. Uh, then from there, they went through the EVOC. Uh, the emergency vehicle operations course. Um, after that, they did CPR. Then they went into hazmat awareness and operations. And then um, they've completed um, Firefighter 1 and Firefighter 2. So it was a strenuous process, but uh, I'm, could be, uh, I'm very proud of them. In his speech, Region Deputy Fire Chief Gifton Lawrence mentions how all nine are unique in their own way, coming from an array of careers. From a Deputy Marshal at Superior Court, an LPN at Guam Regional Medical City, to working at a pediatric clinic at Naval Hospital and working munitions at Naval MAG. Whether it was a lifelong dream to be a firefighter or the desire to serve your communities in a meaningful way, it brought them here to become a part of our team. In addition, all came from a military background. They had um, that work ethic in them and as far as uh, teamwork, so there was no question from day one. Uh, these guys were all about teamwork and they were committed from day one all the way to today. Firefighter 37-year-old Richard Quintaniza says it was a commitment to serving the island community, attributing his previous time as an emergency dispatcher and police officer. We worked uh, very closely with the fire department and, you know, and, and, and from the outside looking in, you know, I was like, I see the type of work they do, the type of uh, endurance and uh, the, the ability to perform, you know, all this type of work. And I was like, wow, that's what I wanted to do. For new firefighter 30-year-old Josh Carl Palomo, his desire to pursue such a profession was in due part to his time in the military. I have my medical experience from the military. Um, I enjoyed the first responder type. Um, so I wanted to pursue firefighting um, as well as um, the medical and the military as well. Upon graduating, all were assigned to various stations on Naval Base Guam and Camp Blas, ready to go. Stay humble, stay hungry, and always have that thirst for knowledge. Because when those tones go off for someone in need, it's not important that you rise to the occasion. It's important that you sink to the level of your training. Jonah Gancharfis, KUAM News. Thanks, Jen. We recognize all firefighters for Fire Prevention Week. Well, still to come on Weekend Edition, we introduce you to the newest member of the Culture Club and later local sports with Dave Delgado. You're watching KUAM. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Hi today, I'm Kalina from Docs Kitty College. And I'm Kristen from Docs Daycare and Preschool. And we are so honored to be caring for the children of Guam. The Governor's Child Care Programs help businesses like ours to really focus on the kids. These programs also help nonprofits and after-school programs 
and grandparents and so many families. Visit www.guamchildcare.com to learn more about the Governor's Child Care Programs. This ad is paid for with funds administered by DPHSS. My name is Leonza Selvage and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Penelin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit. So when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful for the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. KUAM News. Winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. Welcome back to Weekend Edition. Here's the new inductee to the Culture Club. Culture Club is brought to you by Tropical Ice. Hi, my name is Antoinette Castro, AKA Nettie C. I am a rapper, foodie, and part-time comedian. I started by doing covers on YouTube of Cardi B's song, Wish Wish and Press. And then I was encouraged to write my own song and it kind of just went from there. And I got into TikTok because of, I wanted to put, put my song out, my songs out there, but no one was really listening to them. So I started like doing mukbangs and try, eating shows, trying to do like uh, comedy, comedy uh, comedic videos. And they were kind of hitting, they just weren't really hitting. And so I ended up started. I, somebody encouraged me, like, hey, why don't you just, uh, you know, do recipes, show yourself cooking? And I'm like, eh, I don't know how I, how I feel about that. And I posted my, I posted one with me cooking, and it kind of just went viral. And I was like, whoa, okay, okay. Then I started adding my songs into there, into the cooking rest, into the cooking videos, because if you're not gonna listen to my song, I might as well spoon feed it to you. So when it comes to like rapping, I need to be very inspired. Something, I'm, I'm, I have to be going through something. I, is Most of the times that I, I, I write raps or any kind of music, I feel very emotional. Um, there's, or I'm just going through a lot in my life. And I can't just sit down and write. It just doesn't work like that. I have to be really inspired by something, someone, you know, anything. But it, when it comes to my, uh, to cooking, like the videos that I post in terms of recipes, I'd like to go off of what I want to eat that day. And then sometimes, like, you know, if I, if I don't know what I want to eat, and most of the times it kind of happens, right? Um, I just go back to what some, you know, like what uh, other people have asked me. Like, I look at my comments or messages, like when people are like, hey, can you make this? Can you make this? And, you know, sometimes I go through that. But most of the time, though, it's because I want to eat it or because I'm planning to bring it, like, to share with my family or something. practice. I mean, nobody's just an automatic great cook or, you know, I, I mess up a lot. I, I still, sometimes I still, it's not good to me, you know, the, what I cook sometimes and it's just practice, learning, learning, asking questions. Uh, if I don't know how to make something, I call my aunties. If I know how to make something and I'm still unsure, you know, I'm like, hey, so this is what I'm going to do, right? Am I, is it correct? You know, I ask questions. It's not, nothing wrong with asking questions. Um, in terms of music, you just gotta start. You know, you, you can have so much talent, but if you're not doing anything with that talent, it's useless. I think we're trying. We're really trying, and I, I don't wanna knock anyone out for trying. Um, I know for a lot of, like, you know, especially my generation, when we speak our language, we often get ridiculed for it. Um, because, you know, we, we sound too American, right? And what's the term for it? 
they say we're American and Powasu. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, for me, it's very derogatory because nobody wants to be called that. And which is why it's hard for me to speak Chamorro, even though I, I know how to speak it, I understand the language, but I'm scared to be flu, I'm scared to fluently speak it because, you know, there's lots of people who are going to criticize me like, that's not how you say it. Why are you saying like that? You sound so American, you know, like, hey, Semperne, because we are Americans, you know, we're, we're so immersed into a different culture and a, and a different language that it, we have no choice but to make it, you know, kind of like one almost. But I think it's very important and as long as we try. JJ Conception, I, I was in a workshop with JJ Conception and uh, he actually says that in, when his kids are, when he's dri dropping his kids to school, they only listen to Chamorro music. Anytime they're in the car, that is the only kind of music you're allowed to listen to. Which at first I was like, wow, why only that, you know? But I get it. My grandpa used to do it all the time. I used to hate when he, when, when I missed the bus and he had no choice but to drop me to school. And his, the, the songs that were playing were just straight up Chamorro songs and it was so loud. I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, and I, I used to be embarrassed of it because you know, like it's just not, it wasn't like a trendy thing in school, right? And now I just wish that I, I really paid attention. And like JJ Conception said, just, you know, start somewhere. You gotta, you gotta start somewhere. Like, so now I try to practice that. When I'm driving um, to and from work, I, there are days where I just straight up listen to Chamorro music. That's it. Half a day, Zantiro. My name is Nettie C, and I am proud to be a part of KUAM's Culture Club. You can view all of our Culture Club profiles by heading over to KUAM's YouTube channel. Sports is next. Connecting people, devices, and applications. At Docomo Pacific, we know a business like Ambeth needs to be able to adapt under any work environment to perform efficiently and stay operationally resilient. No matter what obstacles or opportunities your business faces, you need to connect with customers, employees, and partners in real time. That's why we do the heavy lifting, so you can jump right into what drives your success and meet your customers where they want to be met. Powering networks for performance, reliability, and satisfaction. Tokomo Pacific. Work better together. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness starts with G. I'm here with professional mixed martial arts fighter Roki Martinez, who will be the main event for Brawl taking place November 11th at the Ducitani Hotel. Man, it's been six years since the last time you fought in front of the home crowd. Oh uh, yeah, man, it's been six long years. Uh, I remember my last fight was, uh, I believe it was against Kelvin Fitial, and you know, it was a crazy fight. So I love the Guam crowd, man. I can't, I can't say it enough, but it's, it's gonna be good coming back and fighting in my hometown backyard, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. For anyone who's followed you along your MMA career, 
as a heavyweight, you pride yourself on conditioning. Let's talk about how training camp has been for this fight. Uh, yeah, man, I'm, I've just always been that guy that wants to, I want to push the pace and, uh, you know, especially against heavyweights, they tend to get tired a little bit more. But um, yeah, man, I pride myself on that. Um, I work with uh, Ray Chargaloff, you know, he gets me in really good shape. Uh, I do a lot of my work uh, strength training here at Paradise. And uh, man, I feel really good strength and conditioning wise. And uh, I think it's probably the best version of myself. Usually when it comes to brawl, you're the man behind the scenes helping put the event together. Now you're on the card. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I, as one of the guys that are running the promotion, um, at first I wasn't initially planning to fight, but um, we worked it out with Japan that they're going to go ahead and bring one of their guys over, and, um, you know, I'll be going back there shortly after. I'm not looking past this fight, but, um, you know, so I'll, I'll have this fight here, and um, and it's good also, too. I just, man, I've been trying to get a fight for so long now, over a year and a half since my last one. A few fell through, and... I just need to compete. I'm a competitor. I have to compete. Like this year and a half layoff is, it hurt, man. And uh, I just, I need to get in that cage. And uh, it just, it all worked out. I got to compete. And uh, man, here we are fighting in my own promotion. And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited for it. Now for some Issa Girls High School Wrestling from JFK. Notre Dame picked up the win over the JFK Islanders. <laughs> Powerlifters from around the island stepped onto the platform at Custom Fitness to compete in the squat, bench, and deadlift for total. Competitors were broken up by weight deficiencies. It initially started as a fundraiser you know, for Gerald Martinez. He competes off island. He represents Guam and he holds records. Uh, so we really wanted to bring him out again. He's a full-time student. Um, like, yeah, we wanted to just fund his trip. So, and then it turned out to be more than just a fundraiser. It turned out to be something bigger for the community. Uh, when Original Strength started, we wanted to just make it more for to strengthen the community, to build a healthier community. And I really feel like, you know, bringing in the boots, the local businesses, the local power lifters, and with 47 plus lifters, you know, I think we did a great job. I'm ecstatic, actually. I didn't realize the turnout was going to be this big. Switching over to some soccer news, the Happy Mark K League select team plays second at the 15th annual International Korean Football Tournament held in Hapchon, Korea. The team represented Guam against 40 other teams from 16 countries. This was the first time Team Guam of Happy Mark K League ever placed in the annual tournament. In basketball news, the University of Guam Recreation Club team, the Tridents, finished second in the co-ed division of the Take It to the South 3 tournament put on by the Micro Friends Basketball Club at the Talofofo Community Center. The Tridents defeated Micro Friends in the semifinals 54-46, to but then lost to Team OG 61-53 to in the championship game. Logan Hopkins led the Tridents with 10 points. Rosanna Kleros led the female scoring for UOG 
with eight points. Guam's U-17 girls three-on-three -three basketball team beat Samoa 16-12 in their opening game of the FIBA three-on-three -three U-17 Asia Cup 2022. Guam lost to Singapore in their second game 19-11 and then fell to Jordan 13-10 in Malaysia. In programming news, Monday, October 17th at 3 in the morning, NFL on CBS, the first of a doubleheader for you. Baltimore Ravens at New York Giants. Keep a lock to KUAM TV 11 at 625 in the morning. More NFL on CBS, the Buffalo Bills at Kansas City Chiefs. Switch the channel over to KUAM TV 8, 1015 in the morning. NBC Sunday Night Football, the Dallas Cowboys at Philadelphia Eagles. KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness starts with G. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Power on with the strength of a Ram during Ram Power Days. Happening now at Cars Plus Guam. Save up to $8,000 off on a brand new Ram truck today. My name is Jose Delgado, and you can contact me at 671-929-3645 to schedule a test drive, or you can visit our website at carsplusguam.com to learn more. Cars Plus, driven by you. Don't need to work, babe, keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace, and I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. My name is Leonza Selvage, and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think it's something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about programming Panilin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit. So when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful for the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. KUAM News. Winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. And before we go tonight, your birthday shout outs. This weekend, happy birthday to Samantha Jordan and Michelle Marie Quintanita. Happy birthday, Dingas. Your family is sending you all their love on Saturday. Then on Sunday, Aliyah Faith Guerrero, Biba Cumpleaños, birthday number 10 to Aliyah. Ampa, Ama, and family miss and love you, Bula. See you soon, Nanny, they say. And also on Sunday, Mariam Grace Onishi celebrates birthday number one. You are just a beautiful blessings in our lives. May God bless you, sweet baby girl. We love you so much, says your family. And you can be a part of our Cold Stone Crew Marie Birthday Club by checking out KUAM.com. And that's KUAM's News Weekend Edition. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. Have a safe weekend. Good night.